Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we're going to talk about the Biden administration's must-win moment when it comes to foreign policy. You know, the Biden administration, they have a huge, huge plan for the Middle East. They have a goal. They, they have a desire to completely reshape it and make it more about the region than being the world's playground. It relies heavily on one thing happening, that deal being reinstated. That's got to happen for anything else to occur. Tomorrow in Vienna, the United States and Iran are going to engage in indirect talks. A third party will be uh, carrying messages back and forth. The goal is to work out a mutual return to the deal. We've talked about it before. There's an impasse because the U.S. says you have to stop enriching. And Iran says you have to lift the sanctions. And both sides have to appear powerful at home. Iran has an election coming up June, I think. Soon, anyway. So they can't appear weak. They can't cave to the United States. A mutual return would be both of these things happening at the same time under the supervision of a third party. This allows both sides to claim a victory. It's the best case scenario. Um... If it doesn't happen before that election and the current administration in Iran loses, the country will more than likely be in the hands of hardliners. And it's over. It's not going to happen. So that's, those are the stakes. Those are the stakes. The Biden administration needs a win here, a big one. They have to pull this off. Otherwise, their entire foreign policy plan for the Middle East, it's gone. It isn't going to happen without Iran coming back to the deal. Because for that plan to work, Iran has to come out. They have to be seen as a legitimate power. All of this stuff has to occur for any of the other stuff to happen. Now, what's going to go down? We don't know. The U.S. seems open to direct talks. Iran doesn't appear to want that, and that makes sense from their perspective. Why would they want to be in a room with just the United States? We pulled out of the deal. We can't be trusted. It makes sense. So that's where we're at. That's what's going to happen. All eyes on Vienna. Since we've been talking about this, I've had some questions. And the main one is, are the uh, criticisms of the initial Iran deal, are they valid? Some are. Most aren't. Most are just U.S. politics at play. In fact, you already have politicians in the United States writing letters to the Secretary of State complaining about something that hasn't happened yet. You know, trying to say that we have to do it this way or that way before the talks have even started. Most is stuff like that. There is one incredibly valid criticism of the deal, though. It doesn't address Iran's non-state actors. That's a valid criticism in the sense that it's got to happen sooner or later. And for Iran to be viewed as a legitimate power, that's going to have to happen first. Because as long as they're doing that, they can't really be seen as a legitimate power. However, from Iran's standpoint, th those non-state actors, those proxies, that's their deterrent. By their way of thinking, that's why they've made it so long. They're not going to give those up. They are not going to give those up anytime soon. They're not going to give them up, certainly, before they know they don't need the other deterrent. I don't think that's going to be on the table in Vienna. 
I don't think the U.S. is going to bring it up because if they push too hard on it, it may tank the whole deal. If the Biden administration walks away with any kind of agreement on the non-state actors, on the proxies, that's a massive win. Like even, even, even if it's just the promise to curtail them a little bit, that's a massive win. I don't even think they'll get that. I don't think they'll bring it up. Um, I, I realistically don't see that being addressed until like a year after we're back in the deal and there's real progress being made. But it has to happen because you can't be seen as a legitimate power while having the non-state actors. And for the allies in the region, U.S. allies in the region, those non-state actors are... Uh, they're, they're a constant concern for them. And it's going to be hard to get those other possible poles of power to view Iran as a legitimate power in the region if they're still using them. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. Not when, not when the U.S. didn't honor the deal. I mean, that pulling out of this was a bad move, and it's going to take time to repair. People want to get beyond where we were at in the deal, but realistically, we haven't been in the deal for almost three years. We're starting at zero, so it's going to take time. I would be very pleased if they were just able to get back to where it was. That would be a win, a massive win. It would allow a lot of the other foreign policy initiatives Biden has to take place. So, I mean, sure, you can hope for an agreement on the non-state actors as well, but I, I wouldn't hold your breath on that one. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.